Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Drills back with it again. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a bale that can hang your pendant off your chain. So without anything long, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to add a mesh cube. And we're just going to scale this in and start trying to get the shape we're looking for. move it up so we can see it without the grid lines going through it and I'm just going to select these four outside edges and give them a bit of a bevel just to give it a bit of a better definition not just being a cube that looks a bit rubbish so yeah we're going to bevel these in and we're going to turn up the segments just to get that nice round edge and shade smooth make sure that looks nice and then we're just going to create a duplicate and we're going to use this one to boolean through this to basically cut a hole inside it. So we're going to line that up roughly with the middle, going to scale it in a bit. And you'll notice that the sides are slightly thinner than the top gap so we're just going to scale it on the z-axis just to get that kind of uniform all the way around. Once that's right we're going to scale that right out on the x get that going straight through it and we're going to add the boolean modifier. Just like that, once that's nice we're going to apply that and we're going to delete the extra. Okay so now we've got something basic that will obviously hang a pendant off of a chain, now we just want to make it look a bit better. So I'm going to scale the bottom in a bit so it's got a bit of a tapering effect. And then I'm going to select these outside edges. And we're going to duplicate these edges and then we're going to separate the selection. I'm going to convert them into a curve. We're going to turn up the resolution and we're going to turn up the depth. This is going to give us some nice edging for our bell. Once we're happy with that, we're going to convert it to a mesh and we're going to shade auto smooth. Next we're going to add a couple more of these, but what we're going to do this time, we're going to add some loop cuts in the middle. Get them nice and uniform. So we don't need to duplicate these ones, we're just going to separate the selection and we're going to convert these into a curve. Going to up the resolution, up the depth. Convert to a mesh and shade auto smooth. Now it's totally up to you if you want to do it different. I'm I'm just kind of giving you some basic ideas of how you can create bows and get them looking nice. Obviously, your own artistic flair will come into it, and you can change bits and bobs exactly how you want it. All right, so we're gonna add some diamonds to it. rotate this diamond up so it's kind of in the right position already going to get rid of the bottom of the diamond turn on x-ray mode and stretch this out a little bit and then we're just going to bring that in a tiny bit just so it's got a bit more of a diamond definition to it Now I strongly suggest at this point you UV map this diamond. Later on you will see why this is a good idea. I always forget to do it and I always make a lot more work for myself than need be. So I would strongly suggest at this point you go and go into UV editing and basically just create a UV map of this diamond so that when we duplicate it they're already mapped out. Thank you. 
Now we can duplicate our diamonds like this. We can just shift D to duplicate. Just make sure you're facing the front facing orthopedic view and we can duplicate them and just move them up and down. Alternatively, we can add an array modifier like so. And if we go into factor wire, that will obviously duplicate them upwards. See, most of these skills you would have learned from our previous videos, and if you haven't watched them, then obviously go and watch some of them. You're gonna learn a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but just gonna be taking you through the process of how we're doing it with the bow. So now we're gonna be creating some prongs. So we're gonna duplicate the diamond, and we're gonna make it a lot smaller, and uh, kind of get in a prong position. And we're gonna be converting this into a prong looking item in a minute. So if we scale this out on the y-axis, it's gonna stretch it and it's gonna look a bit more prong-like. I can see there's a gap behind my diamonds here, which I'll fix in a minute. Just tweak that a little bit, get that looking a bit better. And like with anything when you're making something, it's just about keep moving it around, looking at it from different views and just tweaking it until you're happy with it. So we're gonna duplicate this prong, we're gonna bring it over here. Now, we're gonna duplicate these prongs. The trick is with these prongs to actually make them look like prongs and not diamonds is to shade them smooth and they'll look like rounded prongs basically. Um, we will be doing that in a minute, but for now, we're just gonna duplicate them and move them all around. Just get them in the right positions. You might need to shrink some. If you do actually scale any in, then just make sure you check it from the side view again because like so, you're gonna have a gap. And alternatively, if you was to scale them larger, then they might be poking through the mesh. So every time you scale something, just check the sizing of it again against the side view. I'm just gonna duplicate this a load of times and then move them afterwards. Now these bottom ones were hanging off the bevel a little bit so I'm going to get rid of those and I'm going to put a single one in a little while. I'm going to put a single one at the top. And again if you scale it you might want to scale it lengthways again so it sticks out like a reasonable amount instead of being a lot shorter than the rest of them. We're just gonna try and match the profile of the actual bale itself. Now you could try creating a curve out of this object somehow and using array modifiers and stuff to do stuff like this. I have tried it, it didn't seem to work that well. It was kind of complicated. So I just find with small things like this, it's easy just to duplicate them. So just gonna select all of these, shade them smooth, join them together. I'm just gonna tweak them again. I'm gonna make these a slightly smaller because I think they're a lot larger than the diamond. So we don't really want them sticking out tons more than the diamond. 
Now, we're going to be adding a lot more diamonds and the process is going to be the same. We're just going to be adding them, duplicating them, twisting them, moving them, getting them all into position. So I'm just going to cut a bit of that out and you don't need to watch that part. You can just obviously do yours yourself, but I'm going to skip to the point where I've added the diamonds now. Boom, there we go. Okay, now we're going to want to decimate, so we want to get our polys down, so I'm going to basically find which sections of diamonds are which. So for instance, all these outside ones are joined, so we're going to decimate these as a group. And as always, we're going to be adding a 0.5 on the collapse, and we're going to triangulate, and we're going to apply. Now, obviously you don't want to go too much, if I go much more than diamonds, they're not going to look like diamonds at all, so I'm not going to do those anymore. This is already reasonably low poly, but if we can save any polys, we might as well, because that allows us to have more on our chain. So I'm going to join these beveled edges together, and then I'm going to decimate these as well. Always decimating 0.5 iterations. I've said this before in a previous video, but if you haven't seen that, just make sure you do 0.5 and make sure to hit triangulate, apply it and repeat the process until you've decimated to your required level. I'm gonna decimate the prongs a little bit now. It's a little bit dodgy with these. If you decimate them, you might lose the shape, especially if it doesn't shade smooth. Um, but obviously it's down to you how much you decimate your stuff. Just remember that you're gonna be looking at this from a lot further distance than we're looking at it now. And it will look a little something like that if it wasn't shaded smooth. But obviously from the distance you're gonna be looking at it, you probably won't see that. So just doing a little poly check there, we're about 4,300, which is not bad for something with this many diamonds to be fair. And we're just going to check that our normals aren't flipped, shout out Jack boy with this one. But yeah, everything's blue here, which means all of our normals are facing the right way round, which means it should act correctly in game. If anything's red, then you need to flip the normal. Um, Jack boy showed me this trick recently and it's really handy to know, so yeah, shout out him for this one. And now you're going to see where we should have UV mapped that diamond to begin with. Now we've got to go through the diamonds one at a time and we've got to basically line them all up onto one area of the mapping. If you had done this with the first diamond, then when you duplicated it, the UV map would have duplicated in the same place. So we wouldn't have needed to do this, but yeah, basically I've got to go through every single diamond and move them around until they're all on top of each other. And it's a long process, so I'm going to speed it up, but yeah. You might notice I'm using different types of projection here and I suggest you do the same. Whenever you're projecting something, try different forms of projection. You can try cube projection, face projection, unwrap, um, just whatever one seems to work best for what you're trying to do. But yeah, as I said, if I had UV projected the first diamond, I would not be having this trouble now. I would have saved myself all of this hassle. So just try and remember, don't be like me, try and remember to do that because I forget all the time and it is a nightmare when it comes to UV projecting. Yeah, that's the last couple diamonds, I think. So I've just gone ahead and joined the diamonds together now. And yep, we now have one stack of diamonds projected. So if we was to put a diamond image on our texture, then obviously we could layer that on top and every diamond would be getting that texture. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and join these bits together. You will see that when I join the prongs to the base that you'll lose the shade smooth. You can just reshade smooth again. Like so. And we're just now going to UV map the rest of our body. And we're just gonna basically Q project that and bring that all in to a different area to the diamond. So when we set up our texture mapping, that it'll be nice and easy to work with. But yeah, that is pretty much it guys. So I hope this video has helped you. You should be able to progress more with your 3D modeling. Now you can make bows. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that like button, join the discord. The link will be in the description. But for now, I'll see you in the next video. Drills over and out.